What's going on guys? So you might be confused by the title of this video. Um, you might be like, oh, your manifolds suck or whatever. You know, and you might be right, but I don't think you're right. So let's explain the title of this video real quick. Why turbo manifolds crack? So I'm gonna show you right here. Yes, this is Jeremy's car from the Boosted Boys. And if you see right here, once this thing focuses, there's a big old crack right there. Now, you might be thinking, oh, his manifold isn't very old. Let this thing focus real quick. His manifold isn't very old, and you are correct. It's about two to three months old, um, and there should be no reason why it is cracked. But there is a reason, and I'll show you guys. So check it out. When he first got this thing tuned right, I told him, when not have the bumper on it, I told him he needed to make mounts for his intercooler and of course they never made fucking mounts for his intercooler and now if you check this out it moves this whole turbo i don't know if you can see that but so basically the intercooler is right there just coupled right to the turbo so all that stress every time it hits a bounce a bump it's just pulling down on it so it messed up where the snap ring goes into the turbo right here, so this whole piece right here spins and it cracked the manifold. And now, you might argue and say, oh, I highly doubt that's the reason why it cracked, but I'd say you're wrong. That 100% doesn't look like a weld fa failure, that looks like something else. So, let's explain real quick. Obviously, I'm gonna fix it, that's why it's here. But, there's a lot of reasons why manifolds crack. A lot of the times, it has nothing to do with the welds. Some of the times, it does, and normally if it does, it's because it wasn't back purged, or it could have been welded really cold, or who knows. But for the majority of the manifolds that crack, they're either way too old, or they have an improper downpipe that's rubbing on something or pulling on something, or they have a super long dump tube that's either rattling, or their mounts are junk, so it causes the dump tube to rattle really bad, or there's no flex pipe in the downpipe, there's a lot of things, or you hang a fucking intercooler off your manifold there's a lot of reasons why and so before you go to if you ever have a manifold that cracks it's the first thing i say because before i never knew either i used to thought that all oh, this manifold sucks because it cracked but you got to think about how old it is and your setup if your dump tube is made wrong down pipes made wrong intercooler is not hung right <laughs> normally it's not an intercooler because they're not backdoored right to the intercooler like that so but there's a lot of things that could go into your manifold cracking so before you put the blame on the manifold builder, make sure you double check your setup and see if there's a downpipe hanging somewhere or how bad your motor mounts are, etc., etc. Because a lot of the times, it really doesn't have anything to do with the manifold builder. Um, and let's talk about how I said if they're just old, right? So the material most people use is 304 stainless. It's not really made to be heat cycled like it is, but nobody wants to pay for 321 stainless. Uh, made manifold because they're so expensive and that's made to be heat cycled and that would work a whole lot better than the 304 so that being said if you can get five years out of a manifold with a proper downpipe proper dump tube etc etc and it cracks after five years I'd say you did pretty good think about it manifolds eight hundred dollars five years is a little over a hundred dollars a year to use that manifold so yes it shouldn't crack in five years but if it does, it's a pretty old manifold, you know? I'd say if you get five years, good years out of it, you get your money's worth. So, enough talking about why they crack and whatnot. So, I'm gonna explain, I'm not explain, but I'm just gonna film taking this off. Uh, Jeremy is out of town right now, and he wants to have it ready for IDRC. So he would be here helping me probably, I would imagine, but he is not, so. Yeah, and I guess, I don't know what happened here, but he like destroyed his O2 sensor. And everybody who was asking me, I had, I had a couple people flaming me and hating saying that the way I run this runner right here with the wastegate like that, that it's really, that it's impossible to run a downpipe. Well, if you see here, this is a three inch downpipe and you have plenty of room to that fan, plenty of room to the clutch slave nipple and really easy to run a downpipe. So if anybody who was wondering, pretty easy. So first things first, I'm going to start off with removing the bumper, removing the intercooler and then I will be removing the oil lines off of it and then take the turbo off 
and then so that way I can take the manifold out. It might be a pain in the ass to do it because of that return line, but we got all day. So let's get to it. So now that the bumper is off, I guess I lied. It's hung up by this piece of bailing wire, but check this out. Like, come on. Like, look, okay, now you probably be able to see this better. All right, so watch the turbo. That's the whole, look, check it. That's not the piece that the compressor housing bolts to, that's the whole actual machined part, which is really shitty, so, yeah. So, <laughs> I guess it'll be really easy to take the intercooler off next, just gotta undo these clamps and this coupler, and that one too, and of course take the, the one bailing wire mount off real quick. So, that's clearly from no dump tube. All the black soot. <laughs> Fucking manifold looks great. But now I can show you this way better, okay? So, check this out. Absolutely fucked. Fucking, fucking fucked. I don't know how you could be more fucked than that. 100%. I guarantee you when we take this turbo out, it'll have a bunch of wear marks right where the compressor wheel is on the housing. So I wouldn't be surprised. Um, I don't know, he's probably gonna put that turbo back on it and send it, but I would say he needs a new turbo. So I guess now we will go about taking the oil lines off. So oil feed and the oil return is right underneath it. Right down there. So we'll be taking that off and then take the turbo off. Well, I guess we gotta take the exhaust off, but I mean, that's pretty simple, so. Chop, chop, get to it. Got the manifold off, as you can see. And so here is that crack. It, it does go over here onto the weld, just ever so slightly. Just a little bit on that side. Um, this side, it doesn't come down onto the weld either. Let's see if I can hold steady. It's almost hard to see now because I cleaned it all up, but I cleaned up all the nasty oil and shit on the head flange, so it's kind of hard to see where all the exhaust is coming out, but that crack is there, obviously, I showed you before. Um, so my plan of attack on this thing is I'm going to take like an eighth inch drill bit. I'm gonna drill on both sides of the crack right where they end, and then I'm gonna take an angle grinder and basically grind out the whole crack and maybe feather it a little bit. We'll see, I'm probably not gonna grind all the way through, just maybe three quarters of the way through. Um, so the shitty thing about this manifold cracking is once it cracks, I guarantee you it's gonna crack again. So who knows how long this repair will last. The material is pretty new, but it's already gone through some heat cycles. So, and as you heat it up, the more you heat it up, the more brittle it gets. So as it heats up and then cools down and heats up and cools down, that's how it gets more and more brittle. So, yeah, I don't really know any other way that's better than that to do that besides drill the ends of the cracks and cut out the crack 
almost all the way through. So do that real quick and then weld it up. So I got it cut out. I did cut a little too far on this. Um, it's all good. I'm going to weld it in pretty hot. Um, I did drill two holes here because I wasn't 100% positive where the crack actually actually ended. So just to be safe, I did another one over here where I thought it kind of went. And then there's a hole drilled right there. On that side too. Clearly cut out the crack so that you can't see a crack anymore. And now I am going to weld over it real hot. Not really hot, but pretty damn hot. And obviously I'm gonna back purge it, of course. And then once it's all done, I'll take a die grinder and clean up this burr on the backside that the cutoff wheel left, so. Get that done, get it installed, and get this thing the, the hell out of here. Got quite a bit of penetration on that fix. Just doesn't want to focus, but. Anyways, pretty happy with that weld repair. Not sure what else I could have done to make it better. Um, hopefully it doesn't crack again. Hopefully it lasts a while. Uh, so now I just gotta put the manifold back on and then mount the intercooler for him. I'm actually gonna make him some mounts for it so that way it doesn't crack again. <laughs> so get this manifold back on the car and then we'll get to making the mounts on the intercooler. First things first, Got some holes drilled, put some nut certs on this side and on that side right there. So my plan is, where did I just put this? Oh, here it is. This is my plan. To put this like that, drill a hole there, and then weld something from here to there to that tab on both sides. Um, I should be able to do it to the other side. It just um, might have to go up here like this. I know it's not going to look very nice, but I'm just trying to do something real cheap for him and real quick for him. So it's not supposed to be super complex or super fancy. So that's the easiest way I can think of doing it. So I'm going to get uh, the actual tabs that are going to be bolted down to the nut certs cut. So this piece, I'm going to get these two pieces cut, measure that, cut those. Tack them up on the car, bring the welding stuff over here, tack them up on the car, and then take it all off and weld it all out. Got the intercooler mounts all welded up. Got it installed, obviously. Doesn't go anywhere. It's pretty sturdy, doesn't move. All the clamps are tight, all the bolts are tight on the manifold side. Ready to put the bumper back on. And then I'm done with this thing. Got the bumper on, intercooler's mounted. Manifold's fixed and welded. Everything's back on the car. Should be good to go, ready for Jeremy to pick up. So, it's gonna be the end of this video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you guys are wondering about the RX-7, I have made a little bit of progress on it. Um, I have filmed some of it. The rear end is pretty close to being welded and going back together, so be looking out for some videos on that. Um, Oh man, my face is dirty as shit. But, yeah. Next project is probably gonna be LS swapping the Falcon, like I said. Uh, I'm gonna try and get that done for them before I do anything major on the RX-7, so that'll probably be starting next week. And yeah. So, always something cool going on. So if you guys ain't subscribed yet, or if you're not following along all the time, Make sure you hit that notification button up top. 
so that way you know when I post videos. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Until next time, see ya.